Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this session, we will be looking at 10 common uh, interview questions as part of your uh, EC2 service. Now, your EC2 service is a very important service that we have in AWS and uh, uh, this is one of the very commonly used service we have in AWS. So what I've done is I've divided this into uh, three parts. So we will be uh, covering in total 30 uh, interview questions as part of your EC2. So in this particular session, part one, we will have 10. Then in the part two, we'll have the next 10. And then in the part three, we will have the next 10. So in total, we'll have 30 uh, interview questions as part of your EC2 service. So in this session, we will look at the first 10 uh, common interview questions that you can expect as part of the EC2 service. Once again, before we start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video. So the first question that you can expect as part of this service is what is Amazon EC2? So what is the service EC2, what it does? So EC2, it stands for Elastic Compute Cloud and uh, it is a service which provides us with resizable computing capacity in the cloud. So whenever we talk about creating virtual machines, creating servers, we talk about the EC2 service. So this allows us to launch virtual servers in the cloud and we call them as your instances and also by using this service we can scale them as needed so at any point uh, when we talk about creating virtual machines or creating servers we are talking about your ec2 servers the next question we have is what is an instance now your instance is nothing but it's a virtual server that we have launched by making use of your ec2 servers all right so this includes your uh, compute, it includes your memory, your storage, and your networking capability. So simply, your instance is a server. It's a virtual machine that we have launched, which has all of these capabilities, your compute, memory, storage, and your networking capabilities. The next interview question you, you can expect is, how do you choose the right instance type for your application? So how can you decide what is the right instance type for the application that you are running? So what is your instance type? Your instance type is simply the hardware components for your server. So there are different different factors that you should consider when choosing the right instance type. So you'll need to uh, consider your CPU, so how much of CPU you want, your memory, your storage and your uh, networking uh, capabilities all of these components they, these makes up for your instance type so whenever uh, you need to choose the instance type you'll need to decide on how much of cpu you want how much of storage you want how much of memory you want based on that you'll be selecting the instance type so aws it provides us with various uh, instance families different different instance types that you can choose from depending on your use case so we have your compute optimized memory optimized storage optimized gpu instances and uh, many other types that you can choose from the next interview question you can expect is what is an ami or what is amazon machine image so ami it stands for amazon machine image and this is simply your operating system so it's a pre-configured image which can be used to create your ec2 instances so whenever we want to launch our ec2 instances we will need to specify the ami which is nothing but your operating system. So as to you want a Windows instance or you want a Ubuntu instance or you want a Red Hat, you want a Red Hat instance that you can specify by making use of your AMI. So this includes your operating systems, your application servers and any configurations that are needed as part of your AMI will be available within this image. The next interview question you can expect is how can you secure your EC2 instances? So there are different different ways that you can secure it. You can uh, make use of your security groups, which are nothing but your virtual firewalls. You can use this to control the inbound and the outbound traffic. You can also make use of your NACLs, which stands for Network Access Control List. We can use this also to control the inbound and outbound traffic. In addition to this, you can also make use of IAM rules to control the permissions as to what you can do uh, from the EC2 instance. You can control that and also you can enable encryption. So, you know, in, you can encrypt the data that you have within the EC2 instance. So you can encrypt the data at rest and also in transit. So that's how you can secure your EC2 instances. The next interview question you can expect is explain the difference between a security group and a NACL. 
so your security group uh, both your security group and your network acls these are your firewalls that you can use to control the uh, inbound as well as the outbound traffic however your security group it acts as a firewall at the instance level so you will be uh, associate you will be attaching the security group for each of your instances all right so it's your instance level firewall which can be used to control both your inbound and outbound traffic and the nacl on the other hand it operates at the subnet level all right so when we launch our instances we select the subnets so your um, instances your nacls it operates at the subnet level so uh, any instances that are uh, running in that subnet the uh, nacls will be applicable to all the ec2 instances the next interview question you can expect is what is an elastic IP address? Now, whenever we launch our EC2 instances, by default, we will get a public IP address. However, that public IP address uh, will change if we stop and start the instance. Now, if you don't want that to happen, if you don't want the IP address to change, we can make use of your elastic IPs. So, an elastic IP address uh, gives you a static IP address which is designed for dynamic cloud computing so with this whenever we launch our ec2 instances and if you want to have a static public ip address you can make use of your elastic ips with this uh, one advantage you have is even if you stop and start the instance the ip address will not change the other advantage you have with this is that you, it also allows you to mask the failure of the ec2 instance so let's say if this instance goes down for some reason it has got corrupted or something you can uh, terminate this instance, you can launch a new instance and simply remap this elastic IP, the same elastic IP to another instance in your account. So that's the advantage you have with your elastic IP addresses. The next interview question you can expect is how can you scale your EC2 instances based on the demand? So for this purpose, you can make use of your auto scaling groups. So in EC2, we have this feature called auto scaling group, which can be used to manage the scaling up and scaling down of your EC2 instances. So you can automate uh, the uh, scaling up and scaling down of your EC2 instances by making use of your auto scaling group. So auto scaling groups will automatically adjust the number of instances that you need, the auto scaling group needs according to the condition that you will be defining so maybe based on the cpu you want to increase or decrease the instances or based on the network traffic you want to increase or decrease the instances we can make use of your auto scaling groups for that uh, the next question you can expect is what is an ec2 instance metadata now your ec2 instance metadata is simply the information about the instance the EC2 instance that you're running and we can use this um, uh, information to configure and manage the instance that we are running. So it will have all the information as to what is the net, uh, you know, VPC you're running, what is the subnet, the public IP, the private IP, the security groups, all that information, the additional information about your instances, we call that as your instance metadata. So uh, this information, you can access it through a unique URL. So every time you launch an EC2 instance, there is a unique URL associated with that. And uh, usually we make a HTTP request from the EC2 instance to get that metadata. The next question you can expect is, can you attach an EBS volume to multiple EC2 instances simultaneously? Uh, the answer is no, you cannot attach a one EBS volume to multiple instances simultaneously. So your EBS volume, it follows your one-to-one uh, -one mapping, all right? So one EBS volume can be attached to only one EC2 instance at a time, all right? So if you want to attach an EBS volume to another instance, you will need to detach it from the existing instance, only then you can attach it to another instance. So your EBS volume follows your one-to-one -one mapping and it can be attached to only one instance at a time. So that's about the 10 common interview questions that you have. So this is as part of your uh, uh, part one. Uh, we'll be in, in the next session, we'll be talking about your part two. So there we'll be discussing the next 10 uh, EC2 questions that you can expect as part of your EC2 service. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.